Okay, here we have a 700 TCI, I standing for ice maker. And uh, we're going to show you uh, how these refrigerators work. I think I've already made a video on how to change the condenser motor and how, how to pull out this unit on the bottom. But I want to talk about something that most people don't talk about on these refrigerators, and that's how do they work? This is a kind of a unique... Uh, refrigerator in the sense that all the coldness comes from the freezer and the refrigerator gets cold through a damper control which allows air to go up through into the refrigeration section and it's controlled by the computer which is right in here and this is an early version of the 700 it was the first series and uh, they're a lot different today as a matter of fact they don't even make them anymore but and these are the light and fan switches. It's uh, weight. It's uh, weighted. See the little weight there? And that's what controls the fan and shuts the light off. And you have two, because you have two drawers. One on the bottom, one on the top. So anytime you open up a drawer, you want to stop the fan from running so it doesn't suck into any air. All right, so here's, this is a little different, this control. You can see this. Only two wires, or, I mean, less wires than the one on the top. Okay, so we're going to remove that. So you have this one, and you have this one. And you see, this one has a sensor in it. That's the one that was on top. Now, this switch here, that's for the ice maker. And the ice maker is in here, plugs into here, water comes in through here, goes into your ice maker. When you open up the bottom drawer, Shuts the ice maker off. Now here's the cover for the evaporator coil. Let me get a light. Okay, now we have a little light on the subject. So I can get in here and show you. This is the evaporator coil. This is a defrost heater that evaporates, I mean defrosts the, the ice when it accumulates. This is your seal system pipes, your um, suction line and your uh, capillary tube that feed the evaporator with liquid refrigerant it comes out as a vapor. The fan motor for this unit is basically nothing but a piece of sheet metal holding the evaporator motor on like this. This just lifts up. There's no screws. By the way, be careful of these evaporator coils if you're not experienced, because these things will cut you. If you look at the hand right there, this happened two days ago. Hit my hand against that evaporator and hit a vein. So, gotta be careful. Now to take this fan out, you have to bend this rib here like this. And just push it towards you like that, because that's all that holds that evaporator in. And here's your fan motor. This is your fan motor. Plug it here. And that's what the fan motor looks like. All right, so we'll take that out of the way for now. And um, you've got the defrost termination switch over here, which shuts the defrost heater off if the uh, unit gets stuck in a defrost cycle. You also have down here, there is a drain heater that goes out. I hope you can see that. You can see that wire down here. It's a braided wire. It goes down through the drain and prevents the drain from icing up. You can't take the evaporator out, of course, unless you cut it, and then you have to open up the sealed system. So let's uh, let's remove the, the the back panel and the tracks that hold the drawers in, and we'll pull that panel out, and I'll show you uh, some other components that are back there. Okay, so this is how you take the tracks off. A little hex head fitting there. Be careful 
when you tighten these back up because you could strip these and if you do you're in trouble because there's these are blind nuts behind here I'll show you what I mean All right, so see this is a blind nut and it's pressed into the wall and if you over tighten these screws you're going to strip that so you have to be careful. You also need to take out the door mechanism. This is a, it pulls the door shut. Now the one on the bottom is missing. It might be, I might have it here, or maybe it wasn't there to begin with. So now, the back panel, oh, we have to take the lower one off. Okay, so now all the screws are out. Pull the panel forward. Remove these two wires for the ice maker switch. What? Okay, this is what I want to show you here. These are, this is an air duct. Okay, and there's an air duct on this side, and it's missing. Okay, it's the same thing as this. It's a channel that allows air to be drawn from the refrigerator section down into the freezer compartment. There's another channel over here. You see, this is a, a damper control. And this damper control, you see this foam right here? That seals off this channel that's supposed to go up and feed the upper section with cold air. So, I don't know who took that off. It wasn't me. Anyway, I want to show you this damper control because this is how the top section gets cold. And I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so here's a damper control. This is a transformer that we took out of an old 700. It's a sub-zero part. And it's 115 volts in, 120 volts in, 18 volts out. And what I'm going to show you here is how this damper control works. So it's mounted like that. It's basically just a window. Just a window that opens and closes. You see, that's the way it is in normal position. And when the refrigerator section up top gets cold, needs cold air, this thing opens. So, but it's normally shut. So I'm going to show you what happens. Because you have three wires here. You have a common wire. And you have two wires that feed the coil. You notice there's there's a coil there, an electrical coil. This is 18 volts AC. And I'm going to show you when this thing is closed. I rigged up this little test wire here to energize that transformer. So when the upper section needs cold air, that opens up just like that. And because there's two wires on here, that means there's an electrical current that controls the voltage through this coil and allows it to kind of float depending on the temperature up on top. But one of the reasons why this particular refrigerator wasn't working is because somebody took that air channel out of there. Okay. Okay, so another thing about this refrigerator is this return channel it's just nothing but a foam channel. And there's a heater in here. Right there. See? It's a heater. And it prevents condensation and moisture from freezing and blocking up the channel. So,
How are we going to make this refrigerator work without the channels? Okay, so we took everything out of the refrigerator section. I want to show you how to diagnose some problems on these. Pull this um, up and pull out. It drops down. You could take the, the whole panel out. And now also here, I made some changes here because this these panels would fall down and break all the time so I put a couple of screws in here I think I have another video that shows how I did that and the, you know the lights and uh, connections for the um, control interfaces are up there but here is your here is your ducts so there's one duct, there's the other duct, this is a sensor, and this thermistor which senses the temperature in the cabinet. Here's the heater showing you, it's connected up here to keep that channel uh, from icing up, that's what that's for. And pull that out right here, and that's how you change that heater. I've never seen one of these go bad, but I guess they could. All right, so that's, that's the basic operation of this refrigerator. All the cold air comes from the freezer. And so the, it has a single compressor. The newer Sub-Zero 700 series, the Dash 2s and Dash 3s, had two compressors, two evaporators, two of everything. And so this was a great design in the sense that it was very simple, but the, uh, they had a lot of problems with this uh, refrigerator at least we have um, and I think maybe that would be the reason why they discontinued it not sure but we could still make this refrigerator work and uh, we're going to do some more research on this and see how we can uh, work this out possibly maybe put a coaxial fan in here to suck the air out of the freezer compartment and uh, not have to use the damper control we'll see we'll work on it We'll be back. Okay, we are back. And I checked uh, with Sub-Zero and they no longer make these styrofoam ducts for this model. And as I said before, someone removed the duct so the air is not getting up into the refrigeration section or the food compartment. So I got a piece of foam board here. I guess this is about, I don't know, 3 16ths, maybe a quarter inch thick. And this is the duct that was on the right side where the return duct is. And you can see down here some of this uh, styrofoam is corroded. And pieces of that styrofoam sometimes will chip off and get clogged up in the drain. And it'll cl clog the drain up and you'll get a, a big buildup of ice in the tub. So um, nothing we can do about that. This duct is still usable. We just have to put the heater back in there. But I'm going to use this as a template. I'm going to make another duct, same size, to put on the left side to supply the food compartment with uh, cold air. So we'll, we'll get working on that. Okay, so we fabricated this channel out of foam board and made it the same size as the return channel and popped a hole in here for the mounting um, screw hole screw that goes through there so now we're going to have to trim the bottom of it too so that it sits right on top of the damper control but we can just uh, see how it fits okay so I'm gonna fit this uh, here's the the pin the support for the the back panel so I pop that hole in there so basically what we're going to do here is get this started in here and push it all the way up make sure it's got to go up a little more there it goes Okay, I can see it there. It's got to come down a little bit. It's 
just about there. There it goes. Okay, so now the screw can go through there. And now we'll have to uh, probably have to trim the bottom of this because I believe this sets up a little higher. I can see the, the, the down here. Maybe not. Maybe it's the right size. So what we'll do now is put the evaporator fan back in and um, secure this damper control. And we'll put the machine back together and we'll, uh, we'll try it out. As previously in another video, we uh, were testing this machine out in the, in the food compartment. It just wasn't getting cold enough. And, uh, of course, the reason was because somebody took that channel out of there. So we'll put the heater back in for the return channel and uh, start to reassemble the machine. Okay, so now we've reassembled. Put the fan, my fan back in. We've got our damper control here. Here's the channel we fabricated so that when the damper control is open, the cold air will be blown up on top. The fan motor, uh, when it, the fan motor on this model draws the air through the evaporator coil, and so it creates a positive pressure behind here, and that's what forces the air up into the food compartment and this is your return channel put our heater back in there and one more thing in here if you run into one of these units that the wires are cut on this sensor attached to the evaporator coil that's normal Subzero uh, had a, a bulletin and modified the this unit uh, when it first came out and so we we're cut these out or can either disconnect it or cut it out. So if you see that, that's normal. So now we just have to put the back panel on and reattach our reed switches. We'll put the cover back on, we'll put the machine back together and we will test it out and see if we get a better uh, temperature up on top now that we have this channel installed in here. But that's basic, basically the operation of this unit. One more thing. You can see down here, there's a braided heater, just like the one in the return channel that goes out through that drain tube, uh, the exit port down into a drain pan underneath, below here in the back. And one of the things, uh, negative things about this particular model is uh, because it draws air through the evaporator, it sucks in warm air through that drain tube from the condenser air, condenser um, area down below and creates uh, moisture problems, sometimes ice buildup. So there's a fix for that, uh, easy fix. Just put a P-trap on there. That's a different project, but, uh, and these pieces of aluminum, these are to uh, protect this plastic from the heat from the heater when it comes on. So, okay, so now we're gonna reassemble and uh, we'll test it out. Okay, so we let this thing run overnight. Uh, we got 38 degrees in the refrigerator and zero degrees in the freezer. Perfect temperatures and I have never seen this refrigerator get that low before. So having that channel, that proper ductwork in there is uh, absolutely important. So uh, that's it for now. We'll be back.